This is it. It's over. I don't know how even the most optimistic of Twins fans could feel good about this team getting things back together. Sure, there have been other teams in baseball history that have been out to similar starts as the Twins are on right now and put it together. Sure, injuries are certainly playing a role. You can kind of dream on some guys coming back and and maybe this team getting the ball rolling again. Sure, the American League, you know, wild card picture, those teams don't really look all that intimidating uh, in the wild card mix. We're, we're over a third of the way through the season now, just slightly over a third of the way through, and the Twins cannot beat Baltimore. They can't win a series against the Baltimore Orioles. It's it's over. It's over. Uh, <laughs> it. it it's it was already a very difficult uh, thing to process to to come up with ways to imagine the twins navigating through and kind of piecing things together and getting back into the, into the mix. Now, it's a long season. There's a lot of baseball left, but it would take something like an insane like 15 game winning streak uh, at this point. There they would have to have something just absolutely crazy like that happen uh, to to get it. <laughs> to have it make sense. And I mean, it just, when you're, when you're, we lose two straight to Baltimore, when you lose a series against the Orioles, I don't know how you can muster any kind of uh, positivity uh, that, that something like that could be in the works, regardless of what else is going on. You know, other teams have injuries as well. Uh, some teams have more injuries than the Twins do. That's hard to believe. It's hard to believe, but it's true. Some do. So there's not really any kind of a magic excuse for what's happening. In my opinion, there's not really any kind of savior coming to fix this situation. At a certain point, you are what your record is, you know, and again, we're, we're a third of the way through the season. It's June. You know, I, I certainly expect the twins to have some better stretches of baseball in them, but uh, any any kind of hope that they're going to be alive late in the year is uh, pretty much dashed, in my opinion, from this series. Because, uh, like I said, man, when you can't take care of business against Baltimore, like how can you have faith that they're going to get it together, you know, against some more difficult opponents, which is basically everyone. <laughs> this is a really really bad Baltimore team, uh, really bad. So. Hey, what's up? This is Tom Froming from Twins Daily. We're going to talk about this series. I'm going to kind of go game by game. And then I do have a positive. I like. To, I want to end on a positive note from this series, and then we'll take a look at what's next. But thank you so much for clicking on this video. I also want to hear your comments. How do you feel right now? What moves are you looking for the Twins to make? What are you looking forward to as we kind of follow along? Uh, in June here and see what unfolds of this team. Uh, so again, we're going to talk about this Baltimore series game one. The twins won three to two uh, in extra innings. Jose Barrios was certainly the headliner. He uh, pitched into the ninth inning, uh, ended with a line of eight innings pitch, five hits, one run, zero walks and six strikeouts. And uh, so great to see Jose Barrios pitching well against Baltimore here. Uh, they didn't blow it in extras. <laughs> they, they, they tried really hard, but they didn't blow it in extras. Um, improved their record in extra innings to two and eight uh, in that game. So the uh, go-ahead run scored in the top of the 10th on a wild pitch. Thanks, Baltimore. Again, this is a very bad team. And then Jorge uh, Polanco hit a home run to give the Twins a two-run lead, which that was incredibly valuable, that insurance run, because Hansel Robles immediately gave up a run-scoring double and then a wild pitch advanced the game-tying run to third base with no outs. So that was uh, pretty uh, crazy that he Houdini'd his way out of that one. Uh, strikeout, walk, strikeout, flyout. And the Twins took game one there. Uh, when a, there's a runner at third and no outs, the the basically the, the percentages of teams scoring a run in that situation is something like 85%. So that was a... Uh, Pretty incredible escape by Robles, who put himself in that situation, but he kind of hulked up there uh, to finish off the game. 
Um, so even even the win in this series, the Twins kind of got by by the skin of their teeth. Uh, damn near blew it in extra innings. Basically did everything they could uh, to give that one back to Baltimore uh, in, in the game of the game they won. Uh, and then game two, this was a, a loss seven to four. Just did not get off to a good start. Not really competitive uh, in the early innings. Mitch Garver Scarfer suffered that scary injury. I recorded a video that was in the bottom of the first inning. Um, I'm not going to share that video again. I don't want to look at it again, <laughs> to be honest. I've seen it enough. I'm done watching it. If you want to see it, I'll put a card to the video uh, that I shared on that. But wishing Mitch Garver the best. He had to go undergo emergency surgery. Uh, so get well soon, Mitch Garver. Uh, he'd been playing well. He was the best Twins hitter in May, uh, and he goes down. So, you know, there's no denying that the injuries are not helping this team, but, um, you know, it it is what it is. They've got to move forward. Michael Pineda. Michael Pineda, man, talk so much about this guy being so consistent. Um, he gave up a run in that first inning and then four more in the third inning, uh, and that was all the longer he lasted. Three innings, that was his shortest start as a Twin Three innings from Big Mike. He's been awesome. You know, by far, you know, the least of this team's worries. Uh, but they needed a better start, start out of him here. You know, this, like I said, this team was in a position where this they had to take care of business just to keep the hopes alive. Um, so for Pineda, who's been so consistent to kind of lay, lay an egg here and have his worst start as a twin, uh, was uh, tough timing. But again... Of all the guys to complain about, Michael Pineda certainly isn't the one. So moving on, speaking of things to complain about, <laughs> the Twins did have multiple chances to get back into this game, uh, but went two for 11 with runners in the scoring position and left 11 men on base. You've heard this rant before. You've seen it all. A lot of the games the Twins lose, uh, they've had similar circumstances like that. And then tonight, the final game of the series, the Twins lose 6-3. to three. Randy Dobnak had a very blah, blah start, especially against a bad opponent. Um, you know, i not really seeing a whole lot out of Dobnak. Hopefully he starts to kind of put it together because he's a guy that they have committed to long-term at this point. Uh, not a large commitment, but uh, certainly somebody that they're hoping to uh, fill a rotation spot for a few years to come here. Um you know, again, just he was not very impressive at all, especially considering this is a not a very good Baltimore team at all. Uh, but then Alex Cola may really burn this one to the ground. Um, <laughs> he came in for an injured Caleb Thielbar. Another injury, that's right. Uh, and uh, Cola may promptly walked a guy and then gave up a three-run homer to just put this one to bed. Uh, the lineup didn't really show much life in this one until it was too late. Ryan Jeffers joined the team as Mitch Garver's replacement and had a great first game back. He had a home run and it's the first triple of his entire professional career. So that was nice to see Ryan Jeffers. And that is a good uh, transition into my positives of the series. And this is probably going to be the positives for the rest of the season here is that there are a bunch of young guys getting opportunities right now. Uh, the injuries suck, clearly. Uh, would love to be seeing everybody healthy and playing, but um, some of these guys are going to struggle. Some of them are not ready, uh, but it's good to get big league looks at these guys. Former Twins prospect Tyler Wells looked pretty good for the Orioles tonight, picked up the victory out of their bullpen, uh, pitched three innings. They got him from the Twins in the Rule 5 draft coming into this season, so that's a, an example of a guy who it would have been nice to get a look at at the major league level, so uh, just didn't work out. He had an injury. Um, and then, you know, 2020, there were, were no minor leagues. So I think that hurt his chances of getting some looks with the Twins. Um, happy for him that that he's getting this chance with the Orioles. This is certainly a great outcome for his career. Um, but excited that some of the Twins prospects that kind of are, have been in the upper minors, deserve a look, are getting looks now. Uh, and some of, them are, some of them are showing flashes. Some of them are kind of struggling and, and hitting and miss. Uh, but again, Ryan Jeffers was the guy today that looked good, so that's nice to see. There'll be there'll be flashes continuing and just uh, getting an opportunity for some of these guys to figure out who they are at the major league level, get a, get, get uh, accustomed to uh, everything there. So up next, the Twins are going to travel to Kansas City to play the Royals in a four game series. The Twins are three and three against the Royals so far this year, uh, broken record, uh, but they uh, need to find a way to win this series. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> that uh, yeah, uh, it almost doesn't matter at this point. Uh, but uh, you know, they 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 uh, it's it's a road series. It's going to be tough. Kansas City always plays the Twins tough. Um, but you know, injuries are no injuries. If if they're trying to stay alive, you know, I'm I'm sure the veterans on this team want to get uh, get a chance to buy some more time. Uh, to show that the Twins shouldn't be selling early, at least. Um, so that's sort of, I guess, what's at stake for them. Um, and that that's what they have to do, to show that there's some shred of evidence that they might get back in the wild card race. I'm, I'm giving that up after this series, but, you know, I wouldn't expect anybody in that clubhouse to be thrown in the towel, that's for sure. Um, you know, they're there. They still have fire. They, I'm sure they still believe in themselves for the most part. Time to get it done, though. You know, like I said, at, at a certain your record is your record. Your third of the way into the season is June. You know, from the outside looking in, it's it's pretty easy to stick a fork in this team. But hey, this has been Tom. Thanks for checking this out again. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like for more Twins Tech Talk here on YouTube. Please consider subscribing. Thank you.